my name is Noah and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to do some letter tracing in After Effects with uh, shape layers and trim paths. Now if you've seen some of my previous intros you might be familiar with this. Uh, I'll show an example on the screen and if you want to check out more that are like that I'll, li I'll link some in the description. But um, we're just going to jump straight into it. Let's start off with a new composition. Let's make this 10 seconds long. I'm going to go full HD 60 FPS as my normal settings would indicate. So let's start with some text. Let's say, let's make my, my name real quick. Let's make it with Nexa. My favorite font is Nexa. Let's go with that. Let's do 125 and crank up the kerning. Why not? Um, just in case you were unaware, this little script up here, you're not gonna have this unless you do. Well, I guess then I'd be wrong, but um, it just helps center the anchor point, but you could alternatively um, go to the pan behind tool or anchor point tool by pressing Y and click the anchor point and hold control and it should snap to the middle. As you can see, if I press that button, it shouldn't do anything because it already snaps. So that's what I recommend you do. That's just something I recommend you do for any text animation. Just make sure that's in the middle. So what you're going to want to start with is you're going to want to go to the pen tool, which is up here. You can press G or alternatively click it up here. What I recommend you do is choose a different color than you did for your text. This can be changed later, but we're going to want to be on the stroke. We want to make sure that the fill is uh, has a little red line through it. If it doesn't, then click on the word fill and select this icon right here, which is none, and then click OK. So the stroke, it's going to depend on your font. By the way, all of this is going to depend on your font. So what I recommend is you sort of play around with it. Now I'd say zoom in a bunch, do your first line, and see if that's too thick. In fact, that would just be a tad too thick. I want to say 17 should do it. Yep, that should be good. So you just want to test it out real quick to make sure you get the thickness right. And all you need to do is uh, lock your text layer. And all you have to do is trace over it. If you know anything about the pen tool in After Effects, uh, then this should be not too difficult for you. If you don't know anything about the pen tool in After Effects, I'll link a video in the description uh, with some pen tool basics, which you can refer to, which should help you with this. Don't worry about these pointy edges. We can remove these in just a little bit here. Just uh, select your points, move them around, make sure they're accurate. It'll look nicer in the long run. So that's our first letter. There's the N. Now for the O, you can just make if this would work please. There we go. Ellipse tool. You can just use an ellipse for this one. If we uh, move this guy around, see I kind of nailed the nailed the size on the first try there. Might have to play around with that a little bit on your side. But that should do our O there. Let's do the A. Now on the A, you're going to need multiple layers because there's a line in the middle as well as the main outer line. So we're going to do those separately. Don't worry about don't worry about them being separate layers because in the long run that will actually look better. And for if you have this where it has a flat bottom, in fact let's put this on full so it's easier to see. If the bottom of your letter is flat, like this, the pen tool makes it um, makes this into a rectangle. So later in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to cut it off so it's flat. Like for example, this is a point on the top, we're gonna make that flat. So what you're gonna wanna do is just make sure that the uh, the point goes past where you want it to go. So I'm also gonna do it for this so it lines up everything nicely. You'll see what we're doing in just a bit, but uh, let's move this guy down here as well. All right, so then we can do the middle line if we select a layer, we can just move that entire thing down. Now the H should be pretty easy. That's just two lines. If you want the lines to be exactly the same, you can just uh, duplicate the layer and move it over. Oops. I want to select the layer and use the arrow keys because moving with stroke is a bit weird. And then you can use, the, I keep pressing P, I'm used to Illustrator. Um, then use the pencil to do the middle line. And that should do you for your text. So you can see for the most part, we've done a pretty good job masking over this guy. You can see if I turn this on and off, 
there's not much of the background you can see. You can see a little bit on the O because the O isn't completely circular in this font. But uh, that shouldn't be a big deal. Let's just uh, fit that there. So we can now delete this text layer. We don't need this. So what you're going to want to do now is when it comes to animating this, I recommend you copy and paste keyframes. That will probably be the best, um, what do you call it, time efficiency. So we're going to want to go up here, by the way, to add and then trim paths, which is down here. Just added it. If we open that up, you're going to want to set the end to zero and keyframe the start. I'd say go ahead about a second and change it from zero to 100. If you don't know anything about keyframing and After Effects, I'll also link a tutorial, or like a basics tutorial on how keyframing is done if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm also going to edit the graph editor just so it looks a bit smoother. Just real quick. Um, a good friend of mine named uh, Geeky Brackets, he did a good tutorial on how to use the graph editor. I'll link that in the description as well. So that should take care of our N. You can see it's a bit choppy on the corners. There's not much you can really do about that, except uh, you could probably mess around with the keyframes a little bit more, but other than that, there's not much you can do. Now if we open up this keyframe here, open these, move this forward, you can paste the keyframes here and it should paste perfectly fine. Actually, uh, what the heck? Why is it doing that? <laughs> what? Okay. Hold on. If we go into this, ah, see, this is on the wrong thing. So you want to make sure that you click on ellipse one and then paste it. So it should paste it into this group. You can see, why is it doing that? That is so strange. Why? Why is it, why is it doing that? It's going backwards. Hmm. I have no idea why it's doing that. Hmm. That might be your bug. To be honest, I really don't know. If that happens to you, just switch around where the keyframes are. And that should take care of it for you. And see, once you copy and paste these, they don't keep their graph editing. So yeah. Uh, I'm just offsetting these by 10 frames each. And if you're on 30 FPS, so I think it would be 5, 5 frames. So if we paste the keyframes on this one too. You can see, it's, why is it going backwards? That is so strange. I don't know why it's doing that, but either way, it's not too big of a deal. Just a quick little fix. The big part about doing 2D stuff is you just got a problem to solve. It does take time, but once you get used to it, then that's when it becomes a bit easy. At this point, 2D is pretty easy for me just because I know what I'm doing. So you can see we have most of our lettering done so far. Now if we go to the H, I'll skip in there, paste, there, paste, and there, and paste. So if I select all and press U, you can see this is all offset by 10 frames each. So you can see we have a nice little transition here. You might be asking, how do I get rid of these pesky little corners if I have them? Now that's an easy fix. What you're going to want to do, in fact, I'd recommend doing this even if you don't have these corners, is you want to select, oops, you want to select all of these guys and put them in a pre-composition. You can name this if you want, but I'm too lazy. I'll do it for this tutorial. Usually I don't name my compositions, which makes my work extremely messy, but either way, it doesn't really matter as long as you know what you're doing. So what you want to do is you want to take your pen tool and you want to put a point while well, the layer is selected on the top right or which if you have a square letter that has all chafy edges then use that for an example and then come over to this side line your pen up to this edge here and hold shift and click you can see that outside of this is where it's going to cut off that little edge there now we'll do that for this corner as well you can see if we go all the way over here, do that and close up the path. You can see the A, we need to move those down a little bit farther. The O gets cut off a little bit, but other than that, it's looking pretty decent, I'd say. Now, if you have those issues that I mentioned, 
it just takes a little bit of tweaking to fix. I can see this O has been a bit stubborn. It's getting cut off. Oh my gosh. Maybe I just need to move this guy down. Sometimes it you need to add some more points so it's not an issue. I can move that down. See there's our A or an O taken care of. And see on our A we're having a bit of issues here. We just need to move this guy down farther. One over. Just make sure. Oops. Just need to get my key binds right. I believe I changed them a while back and I'm not used to them yet. <laughs> so um you just gotta keep moving them until they look fine. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of an edge here. So just move it a tad over. And you should be fine. You can see there we go, it cuts off the edge there. You can see we have all of our text. If we play it through, it should animate smoothly. You can see like so. That looks great. In fact, I believe some of these keyframes are not properly eased. Let's just make sure that what I like to do is I like to reset all of them and then just do it manually. Like this. If I could get it to hmm. There we go. Ah, dang it. I was afraid that would happen. See, this is just a mess now. Don't know what's up with this. Um, I suppose I could just select them like this and then do it. See, you're not going to have this either. You're going to have to do the graph editor manually. If you have motion too, that's nice because it does help me a little bit, but I don't really use any of this stuff. I just use the main part up here, so I have most of it hidden on my workspace. So you can see here, that's that's it for our text animation. You can see the font looks fine, the edges cut fine. You can see when it animates a little bit, you can see where it gets kind of cut off, but that's not a huge deal. Because if you have the text as small as this, then it's not something you really notice. If we play it through, you can see it's not a huge deal. Unless you were looking for it, you wouldn't really notice. So that's good. But I think that's going to wrap up this tutorial. I hope this helped you. If it did, then I recommend you leave a like and uh, comment what tutorial you want next because now that I have my new microphone, in case you haven't noticed, uh, yeah, I want I want to do a lot more tutorials. So recommend stuff that I should do in the comments. That would be great. I'm going to leave all those reference links that you might need for this tutorial and future tutorials. In that fact, I'm going to put those in the description so you can watch those first if you need to. But yeah, that's going to wrap this up. I hope to see you next time. I'm signing off now.